Capital budgeting. Topic three, strategic factors involved in capital budgeting. So when talking about more than one year, what else is more than one year? Well, the company in the future in the long run, and we start looking three years out, five years out, and that is strategy. Heck, even nowadays uh, in such dynamic times with COVID, I've heard many newsmakers discuss the fact that uh, anything greater than one year, any year, and even within one year, what we would typically refer to as operations, uh, really requires some strategic thought. Again, bringing in the relevant times of COVID, many people are considering it to be a great success, a great strategic success, if a company is able to survive these 12 months uh, since COVID has really impacted operations. So really, while I talk about now capital budgeting greater than one year, including strategic factors, I think strategy should always really be in the, at least in the back of your mind, if not in the forefront, uh, for so many reasons, um, most, most timely, including COVID. Okay. So with that being said, capital budgeting decisions in real life, they really do rarely look like a textbook example. That said, we first have to learn the theory, learn the application, and then apply and continue to apply and apply the theory and application. So this is because, um, and why, one of the reasons why we say that decisions in real life really look like textbook examples is because decisions in practice are really not isolated. And each capital, capital budgeting decision will create side effects on the company's strategy and its stakeholders. When performing capital budgeting exercises in real life, <laughs> it's important to continuously ask, is this decision aligned with strategy? And how will this decision affect our customers, our employees, our shareholders, and our society more broadly? It's really often um, quite difficult to, to really see the quantitative impacts of some decisions. So for example, let's say a prominent consultancy company is considering accepting a project from a manufacturer of opioids uh, that has been regularly been a source of controversy in the national media. Uh, perhaps this decision would lead to reduced employee engagement, customer boycott, or an increase and or really an increase the risk of the company being regulated uh, by hostile politicians. So each of these, you know, quote, qualitative factors could also have a financial cost, particularly in the long run, and modeling them really proves virtually impossible. So even though an outcome cannot be modeled, we must still consider it. This underscores the importance uh, and really the divergence of these qualitative, qualitative analysis factors. So when looking at these, some typical strategic qualitative considerations may include asking ourselves and our colleagues, is the project aligned with the company's business and corporate strategies? Is this project aligned with the company's risk tolerance and risk appetite? Will this decision endanger the company's competitive position? Will this decision awaken a sleeping giant competitor? And does the company have the human capacity, the talent, the energy uh, to undertake this project? We do not account in a vacuum. Uh, this is real life. We have a seat at the strategic table. Our calculations, they matter, they impact our company, they, our company impacts society. So oftentimes when a company has opportunities to take on profitable initiatives, it could negatively impact some persons or a group. And so we like to mention that capital budgeting is a useful tool and a positive NPV or favorable payback period should, um, should be calculated. It should not ever be used as justification to marginalize any, any group of people, any person. We as finance prof professionals bear the burden of ensuring that our analysis is not misconstru misconstrued in any way that is false or misleading or in a way that challenges the integrity of the profession. As finance professionals, we are held to a higher standard and we must ensure that we are 
analyzing and communicating as clearly as possible to ensure that our contributions favorably impact society. Okay, time for a question. A company is considering a project to build a pipeline that will carry volatile oil products. There are several alternatives for construction. Each of them is progressively more expensive, but the greater the cost, the less likely an oil spill becomes. Which of the following qualitative considerations is most important when evaluating strategic impacts from this decision? Is it A, the price of oil might decline to a level that it is unprofitable for the company? B, the increased risk of an oil spill could attract media and regulatory attention? C, employees may be dissatisfied with working for a company that does not implement the highest level of environmental safeguard? Or D, the pipeline might have other unknown environmental impacts. What do you think? The answer is B. While each of these answers is entirely legitimate, the one that is the most important is likely B. An oil spill is typically a high profile media event causing investigation and public scorn. And in worst case, it creates a, a case for new regulation that could uh, impact the company. The thing is, it's also, it attracts media attention because this company is looking to save money at the risk of impacting society and impacting the environment, um, in which case it should attract media attention and regulatory attention. So while we talk about it as a as if something we want to avoid, we want to avoid it for all of those reasons. The fact that it's not the right thing to do, the right that yes, it will justifiably so uh, impact long-term uh, profits of a company. So it's not one or the other, it's not money or doing the right thing. Like we can find a lot of win-win scenarios um, and let's be accountants uh, for good, right? It's not either or, it can be both. Thank you so, so much. Uh, we have one more chapter, guys, and then we're done the term. So I appreciate you more than I am able to communicate via these videos. And I look forward to talking with you next week. See you there.